Hi, I'm Mike Burrell here with Mike Unger for National Cart News. We're going to do this segment on um, scaling your cart. Mike, why is it important to have a good set of electronic scales versus your old bathroom scales? Uh, well, your old bathroom scales are spring scales, meaning when you stand on them, they change height. Um, uh, as you know, carts uh, don't have any movable suspension piece. Basically, it's a truss with four wheels. So uh, when you put this, put that cart on bathroom scales, you're not going to get the proper weight if you use four bathroom scales. You'll get it close, you can get close, but you just can't get it precisely. So um, you don't necessarily have to own a set of scales, but there's plenty of carts out, cart shops out there that you can use, and they can, they'll scale your cart for a nominal fee. Yeah, or it's a good way to make new friends with the track. That's right. <laughs> Um, so if you do have a set of scales, um, it's proper to have everything set up proper, um, get it all aligned, um, make sure all the four pads are level relative to each other. Once you have this set up and the, and the scales are zeroed, you're ready to go. Um, the cart does need some preparation before you get started, though. Yeah, you want this cart ready, ready to go race, basically. You're going to align the whole thing, align the front end to the rear end. You're going to have your race set up on. The driver should probably, if in a realistic situation, have his suit, shoes, gloves, helmet, everything he's going to race with on. And, you know, you might even have the fuel in the cart. You basically want the thing as close to being ready to go on the track as you can get it. So now that we've got the uh, cart all squared away, we put it on the scales, uh, got Mike sitting in the cart, and now it's a simple matter of making sure that the spoke angle from the alignment is, is uh, just where we want it. And uh, usually when you set it on the scales, if the uh, scaling is really bad, the steering wheel will instantly turn, and then you'll know it's a problem. If that happens, just tell your driver to hold it straight ahead so you can get an accurate scale measurement. But everything now looks to be good. Um, it's just a matter of now uh, writing down the numbers off of the front and the front each corner. And in this case, uh, the front wheels are within... Uh, two pounds and the rear is within four pounds. Uh, generally, um, it's good to get the uh, front wheels within a pound and the rear is within three at a minimum. That's a good baseline. And then you also want to contact your chassis manufacturer and find out what percentage front to rear um, they recommend. If they uh, don't have a number for you um, or you can't find that number if your chassis is not a not a, uh, currently being built. Um, a good number to start with is 43%. Uh, right now, this cart's scaling at uh, right at 42.6%. So this current situation, um, the front to rear bias is good. Um, we just have a little bit of uh, the left rear is just a little bit, or the left front is just a little bit light. So we'll have to make a small adjustment on that. Mike, why is that number of 43% ideal for your front to rear percentage? Um, it, of course, varies cart to cart, um, but over the years, um, it's just been found out that around 43% is an excellent starting point. Of course, uh, you can use that also as a tuning tool um, if you want uh, a little bit uh, less rear grip. You can transfer weight to the front and run more like 45%, or if you need more rear grip, you can transfer weight to the back. Um, usually, that's done with moving lead around or the seat. Our problem, though, is we want to get these front tires within a half pound or so of being equal. So we got two and a half pounds light or so over here. So we got two ways we can do that. We can either raise or lower the spindle height with spacers, or it looks cruel, but it's normal. So don't panic anybody that's new. We can jump on this brand new cart, bend the frame just a little bit to get it exactly where we want it. And getting exactly where you want it is extremely important. Um, weight transfer is a big player in carting chassis uh, tuning and driving, so uh, it's really important, um, especially if you're taking all this trouble to get to on a nice set of scales, is take your time, do this right, and get the fronts within a half a pound. As Mike mentioned, there's uh, two ways to adjust the uh, front to uh, left to right uh, weight balance. Um, we're going to show you how to adjust the spindles in this case to get it correct. What Mike's going to do here, there's washers in between the spindle and the C on the frame. He's going to take one of the washers from the top and move it to the bottom. What that, that is going to do is going to raise this right side spindle just a bit and transfer some of the weight across the front to the left side. Hopefully that will balance it out to a zero weight difference between the two sides. 
This method is really popular with the oval and dirt cart racing. Uh, the American built carts they run are a lot more, have a lot more finer spacers and washers in between there, to where those guys can adjust mm. probably five or six different washers on each side. Most of the European, and in this case Brazilian carts, have uh, just one or two washers per side so that you don't really get much of a, a weight difference side to side. Mike has made this look easy. This can become a very time consuming process if you cannot struggle to get the spacers in or struggle to get your caster and camber reset correctly. And with a just quick uh, adjustment, now, uh, as Mike mentioned, we've taken one of the spacers that was on the top, put it on the bottom of the spindle, which now raises the spindle up. And again, getting back to the scale, this side was a little bit heavy, so now that we've raised the spindle a little bit, it'll take a little bit of weight off. As Mike mentioned, uh, there's two ways to do this. The other way is to uh, bend the chassis. Uh, again, uh, it might look a little bit crude, but it's actually a tried and true method. If people have been doing this to carts for about 50 years, so everybody that's new out there, don't be afraid. Uh, in our case, because the right front was a little bit heavy, that's the one we want to raise. So uh, in this case, we'll just put a little can or something underneath the right front to get it off the ground. And then uh, just need the, the guy that's controlling the front needs to get the steering wheel straight ahead and just put some weight on the right side. That'll raise the, the other side of the cart balance. Now Mike will push down and hold it for about a quick three thousandths and release. And honestly speaking, um, we're only off by about two pounds, so it just takes a small tweak. If your front weight's off a significant amount, it'll have to bend a lot. So you might have to lean on it significantly. Mike, why'd we do it like this versus a lot of people you see, they put the can or the tire or whatever under the spindle and then they jump on the actual spindle or the front of the cart? Well, basically what we want to try to do is you don't want to bend the spindle right up here by the frame. You're trying to isolate the, the bend right in the center of the chassis, and that's where the chassis is actually designed to flex anyway. So it's better to isolate it right there. Right in the waist of the cart. So that was a good, good idea there, and a little more precise, hopefully. So let's hopefully. put it back on the scales and find out what we got. Yep. All right, now that uh, we've adjusted the front end by either adjusting the spindle height or uh, by bending the chassis slightly. We're back on the scales. Um, again, the spoke angle straight ahead. And uh, we'll look at the scales. And the front now is within a half a pound. And the rear is within about two and a half pounds. We're not as worried about the rear as we are the front. The front within a half a pound is almost perfect for sprint racing. Our main focus will be on the front of the cart. And as long as the back's within about three pounds, we're good to go. That's correct. Um, right now, uh, with this cart in this situation, it's ready to go and uh, um, see no problem with this car per cart performing exceptionally well out on the track. Let's put some gas in it and head there. I agree. Let's do it. Just a quick recap. Uh, as we've shown, set the cart up, uh, put it on the scales, found out that the right front was a little bit heavy. So, again, you can adjust that either by changing the spindle height or a quick uh, bend of the chassis and the front percentage is 43 percent right where we want it. Sometimes we might want to change that percentage depending on the track situation and on the handling of the cart. If we need more front bite, we might move the seat forward a little bit, do move some weight forward, moves that percentage forward, gives more bite over the front axle of the cart. Most cases, I find out, at least myself, I want more percentage in the rear for more rear grip, more than I do front on typical days. So you either move the seat back, put some weight on the back of the seat, moves that percentage to the back to about 45, 47% at most, usually good to go then. Yeah, again, keep in mind, 43% uh, is just a guideline, but if you're somewhere around 50%, you uh, definitely have some other handling issue if you have to go that far. You shouldn't have to move more than about 3% from that 43% number uh, to get it correct. Sounds good, so we're all ready to go out to the track and Hope this is helpful to everybody, and this is Scaling 101, I guess. <laughs> yep.